Have you ever heard that saying, nothing changes if nothing changes? That saying is so true. And that is what today's episode is all about. So if change is something that you've been struggling with, if change is something that you're dealing with right now, and it's a little bit overwhelming and there's a lot going on, your girl is here to just share some insights with you. So if that is what you need to hear today, if that is what you're looking for today, then definitely stay tuned to this episode of the Champagne Diamonds podcast. Welcome to the Champagne Diamonds podcast. I am your host, Nadine Russell, and I'm so glad you decided to join me today. This podcast was created for queens, women who are ready to step into their power, women who are looking towards their vision and embracing the journey along the way. Women who are ready to be unapologetic about being their authentic selves. If this is you, keep listening. Hey queen, what is up? Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of the Champagne Diamonds podcast. I am Nadine Russell and I am your host here. And I just want to say thank you so much for being here. Thank you for tuning into this episode. And I hope that this episode brings you so much value and helps you if you are going through a process right now where you're experiencing a lot of change, a lot of change. So I wanted to share just a quick little personal story about what's been happening with me. Um, and also, first of all, take this opportunity to say thank you so much to everyone that has been reaching out to me on Instagram and sending me messages. I appreciate you guys so much. I ended up having to take a little bit of an Instagram hiatus, a little of a social media hiatus, a little, you know, I had to go into a hermit mode for a little bit. And it was not something that I had anticipated. It was not something that I had expected. Um, for those of you that have been following me for a while and are familiar with my story, you may have heard me talk a lot about my dark night of the soul experience and how that was so transformative for me. And let me tell you, well, as of late, I've been going through something where it definitely is not a dark night of the soul, but it feels a little similar. There's a little things that are about the same. And I had to ask myself that question, like, is this an awakening? Is this an awakening? Is that what's happening right now? And if you are someone that's going through a lot of changes in your life, you might be able to relate to that. And I'm not going to go too deep into the topic of um, awakening. But if that is a topic that you guys would like me to address in more detail, in more context, definitely feel free to reach out and let me know. I definitely appreciate all of the requests for different topics. It helps me to know exactly what you guys want to hear about so I can create amazing podcast episodes that will help you on your journey. Because let's face it, we're all going through this crazy journey in life and it's helpful to hear feedback from people that you like, know, and trust. So I appreciate all of you that like me, know me, and trust me for being here. And I hope that these podcasts are continuing to give you that insight that you need to help you on your journey. So without any further ado, let's let's go ahead and start talking about this topic that we call change, okay? So change, there's so many quotes out there when we consider change that we can all turn to and be like, yes, I know that quote. Yep. That quote right there. Yep. 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 And yep. So one of the quotes that I know a lot of people know is change is inevitable, right? Um, there's some other quotes that are not necessarily talking about change. We're using the word change within the quote, but it means pretty much the same thing. Like learning to grow through what you go through is another quote that really talks about change because the thing about change is that it's going to happen. It's necessary. If we look at life, if everything is always status quo, there is no growth. There is no growth. Growing through life. You see how I said that? Growing through life. If we remained a baby, there's not a lot of things that we would be able to experience and enjoy. We grow for a reason. We change for a reason. Change accommodates growth. And I actually made a post about this on Instagram a while back. 
um, for those of you that remember the one that I'm talking about, but it is so necessary to be open to change and change can be difficult for a lot of people. Um, the thing about change is there can be good change and there can be change where it's like, Ugh, I don't know if this is a good thing. Um, not all changes are necessarily good. And I think the biggest thing for me that I have noticed over the past six weeks of my life where I ended up having to take this hiatus, which I did not prepare for. I did not know it was coming the stress in my heart. I was like, oh my goodness, I need to show up. I need to be there. I need to, and, and the subtle change that was happening. This is the changes that we don't necessarily pay attention to. Or we don't recognize are the subtle changes, like the big changes that rock our world. The big changes where it's like, oh my gosh, it shocks us. And we're like, yo, that's a big change. And we're able to adjust to it right away or maybe we try to figure out how to adjust to it but the changes that really 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 make a difference what I have been recognizing are these subtle changes and one of the subtle changes that I had to make was really taking that time to say Nadine you need to give yourself more grace and if you've been following me on Instagram this past year, this is something I've been talking about a lot, giving yourself grace, giving yourself grace, giving yourself grace. And what's crazy is when I felt the need that I had to take a step back, the thing that kept coming to me is like, oh my goodness, I need to be there for my tribe. I need to show up. I need to post. And the question that kept coming back to me was like, Nadine, but how was that you giving yourself grace? And I'm like, okay, so let me take a week then. Let me give myself some grace. Let me chill. Let me take a week. Let me try to like recoup real quick and get back into it. And I kept just being confronted with this idea of pause. If you tapped into the last episode that I posted, I do share a little bit more in depth about that process and kind of some of the revelations that I was having. But that was the biggest thing. The biggest subtle change that I experienced was to be able to give myself the same, if not more, than I give to others. And that, my beautiful queens, rocked my boat and handsome kings because I know there's some kings in the community and I just want to say shout out to the shout out to the kings. I'm always addressing the, the queens, but I absolutely appreciate the kings that have been rocking, that have been holding it down, that have been supporting and showing love. So I just had to throw that in there right quick. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. So it's these subtle changes that happen where we're like, oh, okay. I don't really know what this is going to look like. I don't really know what the outcome is going to be. I, I don't really necessarily have a solution to this change or anything that I can do to prevent me from feeling the stresses of this change because the subtle changes are a lot of times changes that we have absolutely no control over. They're those little changes that are happening in and around us. And sometimes... Um, for those that are empathic and highly sensitive people and are deeply connected to their intuition and tapped into source energy, sometimes we can kind of feel those currents and we know something's a brewing, but we don't know what it is and we're not sure how to approach it. But those changes, let me tell you, when you go through those changes, they change everything. They change everything. So regardless if you're going through a subtle change or a massive change, whatever change you might be going through today, I hope that this episode helps you to get a little bit of comfort in the process that is change because change is not necessarily easy. Sometimes when change is easy, I'm like, yes, come on, change. But sometimes change is not easy. And sometimes yes is not the answer when you're feeling the change. Sometimes it's like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this is happening. Why is this happening to me? A lot of times we go into that victimhood mindset um, when there's a lot of things happening that are outside of our control. If somebody asked me, you know, what was the feeling that I've been feeling or, or or the sentence that I kept saying when people kept asking like, oh, how are you doing? How are things? I'm like, ooh, it's challenging. Ooh, it's challenging. It was challenging because a lot of time change is unexpected. It's not something that we're necessarily used to, especially if it is showing up to us unawares. <laughs> especially if we have no time to prepare for it, we can be like, oh, MG, like, why is this happening? Like, what? Like, what? what's happening here? So if that is you, I get it. I feel you. I'm with you in this journey, 
in the trenches, going through massive change in my life right now. So I just want to encourage you by providing you with like five simple steps that have really been helping me through this period. And, um, you know, the bonus step where I guess it's, it's not a step that I put in there, but it's something that I started out um, explaining and, and prefer, uh, prefacing for this episode is really about giving yourself grace. This has literally become my theme for the year unexpectedly, um, especially with my word for this year being ascension, it has been so necessary for me to give myself grace and continue to give myself grace and give myself grace, which can be difficult because when you're experiencing change, there's going to be a lot of things that are different and you're not used to approaching things in, in certain ways. And sometimes you have to relinquish all control. For those of us that feel like, okay, we got to have this done and this has to be like this, it can be very stressful, you know? And I just want to encourage you to give yourself grace. That was a lesson that I've been teaching. It's a lesson that I've had to learn. It is so, so, so important. And it can be difficult when you're thinking about how else you are impacting and affecting other people, which was a huge thing for me. I'm like, oh my goodness, there's people that look forward to my posts. Like, how's this gonna, you know, but the thing is, I, I've said this a lot of times too, like we are unable to pour from an empty cup. So I just had to remember these things and to be able to give myself that grace. And one of my favorite quotes for this time period is that the comeback is always better than the setback. Quote me on that. Tweet that. <laughs> the comeback is always better than the setback. Okay, queen. So if you're going through some crazy change right now and you're maybe not able to execute things the way that you would like to execute them and you don't feel like you're on top of the world and you're able to do all the things and be all the things, I want you to first of all, give yourself some grace. Remember that you cannot pour from an empty cup and acknowledge that the comeback is always better than the setback. Okay, so let's get into these five tips. So when you are experiencing change, no matter the scale, tip number one is to unplug, baby girl. Unplug, unwind, take that time. That was the key for me. I was like, okay, I'm just gonna, I just not gonna post today. And then today turned in tomorrow. And then it was like one day, then like 12 days, and then the days. And I really had to stop counting the days. I had to really just focus on, what I was doing with my time, what I was doing with my energy. When you are going through change, that is a massive toll on your energy bank. It is a lot to process change. It takes a lot of energy to process change. Because as things are changing in the now, some people, especially if you're someone who is like a future planner, you might be also trying to see, okay, how the now connects to the future. And if you're someone like that, it's going to burn you out even faster. <laughs> so the number one thing that I can recommend is to take pause. What are you doing that you can take a step back from? That you can say, you know what, I'm not going to be doing this right now, or I'm going to spend less time doing this, or I need to disconnect from this. I had to do that. That was one of the key things in my life. I had to say, okay, where am I giving tons of energy right now? that I can pull back and reserve for myself. So one of the areas where I had to do that was social media. I had to take a break from social media. Um, if you're empath, highly sensitive person, intuitive, being on social media a lot of times can be very overwhelming because you're taking in so many different people's energies on social media because there's so many people on there posting this and posting that, and it can be a lot. So that's where I recognized, first of all, that I just needed to take a break from social. And then there were other things that I had going on in my life where I said, okay, you know what? I'm just going to take a step back. And this part can be very difficult for a lot of people because people feel like when you take a step back from something, that means that you're a failure. This means that you're giving up. This means that you're not good enough. It don't mean none of that, queen. It, don't, it does not. It does not. So if that's what you're thinking, I'm going to need you to uh, <laughs> rewind because that's not what it means. Just like when you're working a job, you need to take a vacation. <laughs> it's the same type of thing. Sometimes you just need to disconnect. Take that vacation. 
Take that break for yourself in order to reset your energy. That's all that is. So don't beat yourself up if you need a break. That just means you're human. We are all human. We need breaks. And it is so important to take that time to unwind, to unplug, to disconnect from the things that are draining your energy. Okay? That is step number one. Okay? And I'm not going to tell you how long you need to do it for because that's up to you. Some people just need to disconnect for a couple hours. Some people need to disconnect just for a few days. Some people need to take a couple weeks, a month. It's up to you. This is about you being in tune with yourself and knowing how you are able to function under all of these circumstances. So give yourself that grace and also give yourself that time that you need to be able to get rejuvenated and re refueled. So that way you can show up as your best self when you come through with that comeback. Okay, queen? So that's the first thing is to unwind, to unplug. Number two, while you are unwinding and un unplugging, use this time to reflect. Reflection is huge because here's the thing. A lot of us unplug and we unwind and then we just jump right back onto the ship. Like we, ju we jump back on the horse. We don't make no changes. We just like, okay, I took my break. Now I'm going to throw myself back into everything. Like back like I never left. And... Here's the thing, when that happens, then a lot of times you'll notice that you'll have to take another break and then another break and then another break and it becomes very cyclical. So what I highly recommend is when you're taking that time to unwind, to unplug, to take that time for yourself, take an opportunity queen to tap in and to do some reflection. This is where journaling comes in, okay? Journaling is bae, okay? Um, journaling is something that I used to do a lot of a long time ago. Um, I started getting back into it, dibbling and dabbling into it last year. This year, I'm coming in a little bit stronger, so much so that I've actually created a planner or a journal, I should say. I've created a journal called Thoughts Become Things, and it is a manifestation journal, and it's actually available on Amazon. Yes, this is a shameless plug, so definitely go ahead, check it out. If journaling is something that you would like to experiment with, check out this journal. It's super easy to follow. Um, I got some feedback already from individuals that have purchased it that are loving it. So that makes me feel better because I don't have to be biased up here talking about how bomb the journal is. Um, but it's a journal that I really love. I'm so happy that I have the opportunity to create it. And I'm even more happy to know that there's individuals out here that are loving it, that are enjoying it. So back to the topic at hand, journaling is so important um, if you struggle with being able to reflect because some people can reflect just in their mind, but it's very helpful if you're able to put pen to paper and write out those thoughts, those things that are coming up in your mind that you're reflecting on, those questions that you need to ask yourself. Take that time. Because when you're able to notice what are the things that you continue to do that are draining you, you're able to go in and you're able to tweak. Okay, so reflection is so, so, so important. So when it comes to the whole tweaking process, this leads us to number three. The third thing that you're going to need to do is to be extremely honest with yourself. And this can be very, very hard for a lot of people, especially if you're super ambitious, if you're a go-getter, if you are someone who is an overachiever, if you're a perfectionist, this part might be extremely difficult. So I want to encourage you again to give yourself grace and know that this is a process that might take you some time and that is completely okay. So don't beat yourself up for how long this process might take because it is so important to be completely honest with yourself when you are reflecting and asking yourself these questions about what are the things that are actually lighting you up and bringing joy to your life and what are the things that are actually slowing you down and stressing you out and making you frustrated and that are really kind of keeping you stuck so that is something that is super super ex important to explore when you are reflecting is to be extremely honest with yourself be honest with yourself about what you need to change. Be honest about yourself with what you want to let go of. Be honest with yourself about what you want to add in. What else do you need added in, queen? Now, this is a part that a lot of us forget. 
And this was a part that rocked my world in this time is really paying attention to what are the things that I wasn't getting, the things that actually ignite me, the things that actually activate my soul. What are those things? Because those things are even more important than the other things. The things that activate you and light you up, those are the things that are going to keep that engine going. Those are the things that are going to propel you to keep moving forward. Those are the things that are going to take you from those times of feeling drained and stressed to feeling excited and exuberant and happy for life. So a lot of times we get stuck doing so many things that we're doing to please so and so that we're doing because we think we should be doing it, that we're doing because it looks like the right thing to do and it doesn't light us up, it doesn't excite us, it doesn't make us feel good. And then we're on this cycle of continuing to do things that we don't like, that we don't like. Ain't nobody got time for that. And I wanna take a pause here because I know there's the people that are going to be asking about discipline. Oh yeah, sometimes you gotta do things that are hard. Sometimes you gotta discipline yourself to do da 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 da. And it's true, a lot of times there's things that we don't like to do, that we wish we didn't have to do. And it's important to have the discipline to do those things. But if you notice that there are things that you hate doing all the time and you keep adding more and more and more of it, it's time to pause. It's time to pause because there's a thin line between discipline and torture, okay? So what you wanna be able to do is to do some of the things that you don't like in regards to disciplining yourself and getting it done but also you want to make way and make room for yourself to start doing more of what you do like and less of what you don't like. So for business owners, these are things that look like when you're growing and expanding in your business, then there are certain things that you don't like doing that you can, you know, delegate to somebody else because now your team has grown. You have more time to focus on the things that you enjoy and then you delegate the things that you don't really want to do. The things that you don't like to do, there's somebody who likes to do them. So let's also keep that in mind as well, okay? So be honest with yourself because nobody's judging you. This is you looking at your life. And a lot of times the things that slow us down from being honest with ourselves is that we're so in our head about, oh, what so-and-so is gonna think, nah, 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 nah. This is your personal time, queen. This is your personal time with you. So be honest with yourself, okay? Tip number four. So now that you've taken this time, you've unwound, you have reflected, you have been honest with yourself. Now, what do you do now? It's time for you, queen, to make a plan. What is your plan? What is your plan? What is your action step? And this is beautiful in the sense of manifestation because when you make a plan, you're able to get super clear when you write it out. So this is a form of scripting or a form of writing, I should say, that's called scripting, which is a very popular manifestation technique. And when you take that time to get super clear and start making a plan and connecting the dots, you're going to start feeling relief. You're, start gonna, you're gonna start feeling better about the choices that you're making. You're gonna start feeling better about all the added things that you needed to add into your life that's gonna light you up and all the things that you said, no, this ain't working, let me get rid of these things. You're gonna feel better about it. You're gonna start being able to visualize yourself and to start feeling yourself becoming the best version because now you're fully in alignment with what lights you up. You're fully in alignment with the things that make you happy, that bring you joy. Because when we're tapped into that joy frequency, it's easier for us to operate on a day-to-day -day basis. And you know, like attracts like. So more joy attracts more joy, attracts more joy, attracts more joy. Which brings me to the lesson from last year, which was following your bliss. How are you following your bliss? Are you following your bliss? So that is step number four. And the fifth step, the fifth step is to start implementing. How are you going to implement this plan? Paying attention to the things that light you up 
and making that decision to do more of them, how are you going to start taking that inspired action towards it? Where are you going to start looking for opportunities to make this plan possible? Because manifestation works when we step into that, when we step into that belief, when we have that gratitude for things that haven't even happened yet, when we have that gratitude for things that we're experiencing, when we have the faith to research industries and topics and ideas that we want to do, when we have the courage to take the first step, and to start looking into things and start talking to people that are already doing the things that we want to do and start researching. What is your action plan going to be? So I'm going to go ahead and break it down for you one more again, the five steps <laughs> on how to handle massive change. Step number one is to unwind and to unplug. Step number two is to reflect. Step number three is to be honest with yourself. Step number four is to make a plan. And step number five is to implement. So I hope that makes sense to you. I hope you got these gems. I hope you took some notes. I hope you share this episode with a queen that you know or a king that you know that is going through massive change right now. Because let's face this, pretty much everybody is going through massive change right now, especially with being in the middle of a global pandemic. There's a lot of massive change. <laughs> and I hope that this episode really inspired you to pay attention to how you're feeling. Pay attention to your soul. Pay attention to your emotions and what they're telling you. And take that time to sit with them. Take that time to discover yourself more and to learn yourself more. Because let me tell you something, on this self-love journey that I have been on for half a decade, over half a decade now, is the most beautiful relationship that we will ever have is our relationship with ourselves. And we cannot continue to allow ourselves to be second on our list. If we do not put ourselves first, who is going to put us first? We have to be realistic with that. If we can't take that time to sit with ourselves when we're going through massive change and ask ourselves the important questions, who are going to ask us those questions? If you're lucky and blessed to have friends and family in your life that are very intuitive and really tapped in and naturally ask you these questions, you are so blessed. You have so much to be grateful for. If you have a mentor or a coach or someone that you can sit down and talk to that are going to ask you these questions, you are also very blessed. But we live in a world where a lot of people don't even know that they need to sit with themselves and to go on a journey of self-discovery and self-reflection. A lot of people don't know that. So I hope that this episode helps you on your journey. Because I'm telling you, these last six weeks of my life have absolutely been crazy. I did not see half of these things coming. <laughs> it's like I felt in the undercurrents like something's brewing, something's coming. Wasn't sure what it was. But let me tell you challenge, opportunity, confusion, upset, heartbreak, joy, peace, frustration, all the emotions jumbled up together in a pot have been expressed over the, the past six, six to eight weeks in my life. And I'm here and I'm standing and I'm here and I'm grateful to be able to share my journey, to be able to share my story. And I hope that this episode truly, truly blesses you. I love you so much. I appreciate you. And for y'all waiting to jump back on the gram and have a little conversation with me, don't worry, your girl's preparing to be back on the gram again. Um, so definitely look out for me at Entice the Brand. And always come through, visit me at my little virtual house uh, <laughs> at www.enticethebrand.com. There's going to be a lot of new and exciting things coming very, very soon. Um, I'm actually going to go ahead and just right now put that in there that there is a new merch collection that's being launched. Definitely look out for that. There's going to be some new things in in the store for you guys to pick out um, for the fall winter season. And yeah, more things drop in here and there. So I want to say thank you again so much for being here. I love you. I appreciate you. 
And I will see you next time in another episode of the Champagne Diamonds podcast. Bye for now. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Champagne Diamonds. I look forward to seeing you again in the next one.